Hello. Hi. Yes. Incredibly good to be back here. Third time actually here at uh, here in Singapore. I was here five years ago when Thomas organized JS Camp Asia. It was called back then. Uh, my name is Jan Jongboom. I am developer evangelist IoT at ARM. ARM is the company that makes you know, that basically all the chipsets. All the chipsets in your phones, in a lot of the smart devices that you might have in your house have ARM chips in them. And we're going to talk a little bit about JavaScript and IoT. I know that this morning you've heard a talk um, from a woman from Tesla. We're going to build on top of that. We're going to take it one step further. We're not just going to look at, OK, how do I do my prototyping in JavaScript? But if I go from there, how can I run that application then on a coin cell for multiple years? Which is a challenge. Um, so when I proposed this to, uh, to Thomas, Thomas said, this was me and Thomas in Bali earlier this year, Thomas said, yeah, it's fine if you come back, but you need to bring lasers. So what we have <laughs> in front of here, four lasers that we're going to utilize later in this point and later, at, uh, later in this talk, and hopefully have something for you to take home as well. So um, in the last five years, I've seen JavaScript change a tremendous bit. JavaScript has more or less, and don't ask me how it happened, but JavaScript has taken over the world. We, <laughs> we've seen JavaScript pop up basically everywhere in the last few years. You know, when I started programming, and these were in the days that VBScript was still a thing, JavaScript first took over the browsers. And then all of a sudden, it started taking over servers as well when we got Node.js. And the situation that we're now in is that it's even making its way into the IoT space. Two years ago, or a year and a half ago, at um, JSConf US, we did a program called Node Rockets, in which we developed and built, just by ourselves, a rocket powered by JavaScript. So the idea was that, based on water power, it would shoot up in the air, write a JavaScript program where we can verify whether it was already going down. When it goes down, deploy a parachute, land the thing safely, get a nice video of everything that happened. As you might see from this photo, our rocket didn't completely work as planned, but <laughs> there was JavaScript inside. And the reason that JavaScript gains momentum here around these kind of solutions, like I want to build something connected or something smart, that doesn't even need a screen, or doesn't even, it's not even mains powered, is because it's easy to learn. And because that, we can easily make a big community around it. You know, we've seen libraries like, um, like Johnny5, we've seen boards like Tessel, that make it really easy to leverage JavaScript, leverage the amazing community that is around JavaScript that we might miss from traditional programming languages, traditional programming methods for IoT devices and see them here to quickly help us build connected devices. Now, typically, these, these solutions, including the, the rocket that we built, run on a, on a development board like a Raspberry Pi, a chip, or maybe a Tessel, often using a library like Johnny5, the JavaScript robotics framework. But there are many others. But the key is everything is built on top of Node.js. And that has a number of, of really big downsides. The most important one is that well, Node.js is desktop software, right? Battery usage has never been a concern. Node.js is desktop software running on desktop-grade computers. I can run a full desktop on a Raspberry Pi. So it means that the two biggest downsides that I see there is, first of all, it's way overpowered for what we're trying to do. Every time I see an article, on the interwebs, where basically someone says, well, I got this super cool temperature sensor on a Raspberry Pi 3 running. And yeah, I wrote the program in Node.js. The only thing that I'm thinking at that point is, well, but you're using a quad-core machine to run a temperature sensor. <laughs> this, can't, this can't be the good way around, right? And this is bad if you, if you want to go a little bit further than just simple prototyping. On one end, it is incredibly expensive to put a Raspberry Pi in everything. It runs you $40. The other thing, which is, you know, I think is, is worse in that sense, is that, well, look at, look at battery usage, current consumption. A Raspberry Pi 3 in idle mode consumes 220 milliamps of current. 
If you, would, if you had told me this a year ago, I would have no idea what you were talking about. But let's compare it. If we want to run that Raspberry Pi 3 for a year on a battery, you know, it's not even a coin cell, relatively powerful, this is the budget that we need to work with. We need to be 1,600 times more efficient to run that Raspberry Pi 3 off a battery than we can currently do. Can we do better? I bet you were expecting Obama here. Um, <laughs> sure. So let, let's look a bit at like how professional companies do that. If I'm building a real IoT solution today, what am I using? Well, this is, for example, a Honeywell sensor, temperature sensor that you put outside. These run fine on batteries, and they've, they've run fine on batteries for many years. And the, the key here is microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are really tiny computers running on really, really tiny chips. This is one. This is a, a chip from Nordic Semiconductors. It's 0.6 centimeters by 0.6 centimeters. That's the scale that we're thinking about. This is a development board for that chip. This little thing, you can't even see it from the audience. That is responsible for all the computing. It combines the MCU, it combines RAM, and it combines flash storage and a Bluetooth chip in a half a centimeter by half a centimeter. It's insanity. But you know, it's a trade-off. Yes, they're small, and yes, they are cheap. Typical microcontrollers run $1, $2. They're easy to integrate in your own design. But you know, it's a trade-off. I can't run Linux on it. Linux on it. I can't run another operating system on it. I can't run V8 on it. So that means that Node.js is kind of out of the question. They're, way, they're not powerful enough for that. A powerful microcontroller will maybe have 80 megahertz of processor speed and 64 kilobytes of RAM. You know, and with, with a lack of power also comes a lack of ecosystem. Because it's harder to program them, it's C++, it's assembly, that means that we don't get a nice ecosystem around it that we have with JavaScript. So that got me thinking. I've been, I've been toying with the idea of JavaScript on connected devices for the past two, three years. And in a way, I want the best of both worlds. I want the cheap designs of a microcontroller. I want the easy way of integrating that into my own designs. But I would also love to have a vibrant and big community around that, similar to what we can currently do in the Node.js connected devices ecosystem. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could run JavaScript on these microcontrollers. In ARM, we've been thinking about ways of making microcontroller development easier already for about the last seven years. So we, we developed a product called Embed. That's a product that I'm working on on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to do is make microcontroller development in general easier. So we created the Embed platform. We have over 100 boards supported, 200,000 developers. You guys have no idea what it is because you're not embedded devs. But it also means that we already have lots of APIs, libraries, and community around it. Not enough. That's what I'm saying as developer evangelist. I want to I have a bigger community. Of course I want that. You know, it's all in C++. And then came along Samsung. Samsung developed a Jerry script. This is not the official logo. <laughs> if you've seen Seinfeld, you understand the reference. Um, it's developed by Samsung, and it's a JavaScript VM for ultra-constrained devices. The JavaScript VM, unlike Node.js, runs on microcontrollers. The whole idea is that it fits in 64K of RAM, and it's written in C++. So we figured if we can combine these two projects, we have Embed on this side, making it super easy to program on microcontrollers for a lot of different ones, so we don't need to port to a new microcontroller every time it comes out we still have the flexibility of JavaScript VM. So that's a project that, that, were, that was launched actually this morning. <laughs> Worked really hard to get the website out, which is called JavaScript and Embed. And it combines the best of both worlds of microcontroller development with JavaScript. It combines the power to run on little tiny boards like these. And this is a, this is a microcontroller under $2 retail price. Under $2, you can buy it in single quantities, has a Wi-Fi chip on board, and now it can run JavaScript, it can run all your programs. That is freaking awesome. That is, okay, sorry, 
I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> So today, um, we're releasing that. We're, it runs on 40 different boards already. So you can just go to our website, pick any of those boards. Some have Wi-Fi, some have Bluetooth. All the critical parts, drivers, operating system, et cetera, are still written in C++. It's, it's a project that has been, has been going for about seven years already. So we have stuff like deep sleep and have a way of like putting your microcontroller in really, really deep sleep states. And you can leverage our C++ ecosystem around it every connectivity method. Your whole application code can run in JavaScript. Still take advantage of our stuff that we've done on making it run efficiently, making it go to sleep whenever possible, while still maintaining the flexibility of writing your application in JS. So this is one of the simple programs that we have. Really easy, how to write Blinky. You start with cloning our sample, write a little bit of code, run Gulp, JavaScript uh, stuff. It creates a file. And you just drag the file onto your board. The development board mounts as a, as a USB mass storage device. So you don't need any drivers. Just drag and drop, bam, application running. Nice, flexible. Be aware, if you think like, yeah, I want to do this, JavaScript is really, really slow on, this <laughs> on these things. Um, raw performance is about 100 times slower than C++. But because we've written all the critical parts, in C++, you know, the, the bootloader, networking stacks, basically everything else that not your user code, efficiency is relatively good, especially if you sleep a lot. So you can spawn out of JavaScript whenever we need it. We can run stuff in C++ in a separate thread. But this way we have, like a, we have a model where we have the nice flexibility of JavaScript, but still can run stuff at native speed in C++. A bit similar how Node.js does that. On, uh, on Linux systems. But it's a true microcontroller, right? Yeah, your application code might run a bit slow, but it's a real microcontroller. It's come with all the benefits. We can run, this is one of the development boards again, this one even has a, has a little coin cell holder. Little coin cell holder here. And that's because it's actually meant to run off a coin cell. Using this approach, we can write JavaScript applications that run straight on that. I'll have some numbers later. It also allows us to do some really interesting um, experiments. The BBC Microbit is a little computer that's been given to every 10 and 11-year-old kid in both the UK and in, and in Iceland now. And this is how they learn to, learn to program as part of their official uh, primary school curriculum, which is really cool. All these kids, like a million kids, have gotten like this little board and had to learn the program. And by having an abstraction layer on top of it, on top of like our native APIs, we can all of a sudden have um, little simulators that run. So the kid can program it in the browser, drag little blocks together, we can simulate it, and after that we compile it, run it in our VM, and all of a sudden have the same experience on the device and here. Same thing we can do. Um, this is the simulator that comes with um, uh, JS and Embed. I hacked it together in the plane here. <laughs> um, so on top, you see basically three, three LEDs toggling. We'll run exactly the same on the board. And then we can also fake extra peripherals, like the Bluetooth stacks. So in this case, I can connect. I see what is happening if I would connect my phone to the device. And for example, toggle the, toggle the LED here, which I just did. So we have some really interesting things. Some other stuff that we do is that we abstract away many microcontroller problems. Manual thread management, interrupt switching, uh, it's all abstracted away behind the JavaScript event loop. So even if you wanted to make like a real product out of this, having a JavaScript abstraction on top of it is really nice. In the future, what I would really like to do is because we have everything in the event loop, automatic power management. Just put the device to sleep. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to call sleep. We just realize, oh, every second do this. In between, I'll go to sleep and make everything magic. So the comeback, can we run this on a, on a, on a coin cell right now? Yes. Remember, 220, uh, 0 0.127 milliamp is the budget that we have if we want to run this one year on AA battery. These are numbers of a JavaScript beacon with Bluetooth on sending a message every second broadcasting it out, and our budget is 0.02A. But that is seven years on an AA battery, and on a coin cell, you'll reach about a year and a half. And that is freaking impressive for a JavaScript app. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Thank you. So current state, it's released today. It's on embed.com slash JS. We have 40 boards supported. Um, 
Unfortunately, at the moment, if you want to use C++ libraries, we have about 6,000 of them for basically every peripheral that you'll find. If you buy a sensor, if you buy an actuator, uh, if you buy an accelerometer, whatever, we need a C++ binding right now. I'm hoping that someone here in the audience will say, Jan, of course I'm going to help you with that, um, because then we can automate that. It shouldn't be too hard. It's Apache 2 licensed. Um, it's bad, but please help us. It's going to be freaking amazing. Um, as I said, everything available at m.com.js. Here's one of the things we can do with that. Woo, now I got lasers controlled through JavaScript, and I can do stuff. And I don't know if you can actually see this from the audience, because they're a little bit less bright than I thought. But lasers, JavaScript, all kinds of cool stuff, runs on the coin cell. If this is not the future, then I don't know what is. And with that, I want to thank you all. <laughs>